I'm guessing this has something to do with food. <laughs> Just a guess. I, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. But, but it, it looks like a Palmer group. <laughs> so uh, if everybody is comfortably seated and, and has you have your refreshments with you, let's begin our briefing. Meet Sarah. Sarah is a second generation pumpkin farmer from Frey Farm, Illinois. This season, Sarah had to leave about 10% of her pumpkins to rot in the field because it wasn't profitable to harvest them. A portion of Sarah's pumpkins make their way to nearby Louisville, Kentucky, where they decorate the city streets as jack-o'-lanterns during Halloween. Unfortunately, due to the lack of local composting facilities, most of the carved pumpkins are thrown to landfills where they decompose and emit harmful methane into the atmosphere. Whole and carved pumpkins also serve as decorations throughout Halloween and Thanksgiving. Unaware of the range of food waste hazardous impacts, most of Louisville's residents do not see their pumpkins as food. They see them as decorations, most of which are thrown out after Thanksgiving has passed. Another portion of Sarah's pumpkins are processed to become canned pie filling, which is transported across the country, taking up more energy and emitting more carbon. I bought a few of those here in New York, excited to make my first ever Thanksgiving pie. The pie turned out great, but I didn't end up using the whole can. I probably won't need it again until next year, yet the date on the can expires beforehand, leading all the resources invested in these pumpkins to find their way into the garbage. But what if it was easier for Sarah the farmer, the residents of Louisville, and consumers like me to take a different path on each of these decision points. This is where the Food Recovery Act of 2017 comes into play. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tamar, and I'm here to give you an overview of our team's analysis of the Food Recovery Act. I would like to thank our managers, Aurora and Hansen, as well as my entire team, and Professor Palmer for his advising. Proposed by a Democratic member of the House of Representatives, Shelley Pingree, the bill aims to reduce the nationwide incidence of food waste and its environmental and social toll. 40% of food in the U.S. is being wasted. Sarah's pumpkins illustrate just one example of how food is wasted across the entire food cycle, from farms to distributors and retailers, and finally to consumers. The problem is rooted in the food that we do not see, the throwing away that we do not realize. Little by little, it all adds up to this unimaginable percentage. When we waste a pumpkin, are we just throwing away the pumpkin? Absolutely not. We are wasting all the water invested to grow and process it. If we succeed in eliminating just 20% of food waste, we would also save 1.5% of all freshwater use in the US. That adds up to trillions of gallons of water per year. When we waste a pumpkin, we are also wasting all the energy used to transport and store that pumpkin. About 10% of the US energy budget goes towards bringing food to our tables. We are transporting food long distances just for it to end up rotting in a landfill. Food waste accounts for 22% of total waste in landfills in the US. It increases the cost of operating these landfills. It releases more greenhouse gases emitted from the rotting food. All of these problems, which we contribute to with the disposal of a single pumpkin, could have been reduced if we just ate the pumpkin. But consumers are not going to stop making jack-o'-lanterns in the name of reducing food waste. No. A far better solution would be to create programs that would help producers and consumers to mitigate their waste. The simple idea behind our bill is that if we can reduce food waste through wise policy, we can also decrease a lot of these environmental impacts. The bill includes many additions to existing food and agricultural legislation. For our program design, we focused on five programs within the bill. I will be talking to you today about the establishment of the Food Recovery Liaison Office, the construction of on-farm anaerobic digesters, as well as municipal composting facilities, followed by revising date label standards, and finally, 
launching a national media campaign to promote food waste, food waste awareness. The changes the bill seeks to implement concern the work of several uh, federal, state, and local agencies, as well as nonprofit organizations. In order to coordinate between these agencies, the bill calls for the establishment of the Food Recovery Liaison under the USDA Office of the Secretary. Whether the liaison is meant to be, meant to be a singular position or a new office is left for interpretation. Our team saw fit to make it into a federal office that will serve as a central hub for managing food waste reduction efforts. Its establishment represents a permanent recognition of the problem. The new office will consist of the three positions shown here. The office director will be involved in the evaluation and implementation of all the programs the bill suggests. Remember Sarah and the pumpkins she never harvested? The bill provides loans for the construction of on-farm digesters that will allow her and other farmers to use the crops that are left in their fields to produce renewable energy. Currently, there are only 43 anaerobic digesters specifically for food waste on farms throughout the US. The bill provides a loan program of $70 million that could allow us to build 580 new digesters, drastically increasing the amount of food waste that can become an energy resource on farm. To implement this program, we decided to add a total of 14 new positions in the USDA Water and Environmental Programs Office, a unit that already manages waste from farms. This includes a program manager, financial analyst, outreach coordinators, and field officers. Moving out of the farms to cities and towns, the bill provides grants for the construction of municipal compost facilities. Only about 5% of food waste is composted in the US. Sarah's pumpkins were transported across the country and ended up in a landfill. This government programs, program aims to take food out of the landfill and do something with it. This, of course, takes investment. And these grants provide the incentive to initiate this much needed change. The program allocates $100 million annually, which would allow for the construction of 32 new composting sites each year. Our first priority will be to initiate the program in states that lack existing facilities and choose specific cities within those states that will create the biggest impact. By that logic, we hope to ultimately get these municipalities to expand their composting programs with their own resources and inspire other cities to develop their own composting programs. To implement this program, our team decided to add staff to the EPA Resource Conservation and Recovery Office, which currently oversees municipal solid waste. The program manager will be situated in the EPA's national headquarters, but the rest of the staff will be working, working out of the regional offices. Another problem the bill aims to solve is the confusion surrounding food date labels. I threw away my unused can of pie filling because it was approaching the date on the label. But was it really unsafe to consume? Did that date indicate a safety concern or simply a decline in quality? As you can see, there are countless variations in the language used on food date labels, which leads many consumers to throw away perfectly healthy food based on the misunderstanding that it is unsafe. If people understand that their food is safe, they will simply throw away less. The bill creates new uniform date label standards, a mandatory use-by label to indicate safety, and an optional best if use-by label to indicate quality. The Federal Trade Commission will collaborate with the Liaison Office to oversee label implementation by suppliers. Consumer education to clarify the meaning of the new label, of the new labels, will take form in conjunction with a national media campaign, a program that I will discuss next. So the bill allocates $8 million to carry out a national media campaign. The main goal of the campaign will be to raise public awareness about food waste and its possible solutions, such as the ones I just outlined before. If the residents of Louisville understood the consequences of throwing away their pumpkins, they may have found ways to use what they can in the kitchen and dispose of it properly. Our team proposes a mix of traditional media, such as television and bus shelter ads, and social media pathways that will include a hashtag campaign to engage a younger public. These will be strengthened by partnerships with public figures to help sway public opinion. The work on the campaign will be contracted to an external advertising agency, and a third-party market research agency will be contracted to evaluate the success of the campaign. This is Sarah Frey here in the flesh. 
the woman whose farm produces more pumpkins than any other farm in the country. As a conscious farmer working to reduce waste on her farm, Sarah initiated several internal campaigns, such as No Pumpkin Left Behind, where leftover pumpkins are harvested for their seeds, and Pumpkins of the World, encouraging more consumers to cook the uncarved pumpkins they use for decoration, because they are perfectly good food after all. This, uh, this is an example of how one farmer is trying to address food waste on an individual level, while well, the issue is really a systemic one. The Food Recovery Act offers a comprehensive solution to each one of the situations played out across the life cycle of Sarah's pumpkins. And of course, this doesn't just apply to pumpkins. It applies to all kinds of wasted food, which remember is 40% of all the food produced in this country. Our bill offers accessible alternatives to countless situations where food waste can be minimized so that we could address this hazardous trend and make better use of our resources. Thank you. I will take any questions. That was a really excellent presentation. Um, so when I think of a farm, I think about there being a lot of work that needs to be done and always a lot of factors that need to be considered. And so I was just wondering how likely or how willing do you think um, farmers would be to participate in some of these programs that you've discussed or adopt additional regulations that they need to comply with? Thank you. Um, that's a great question. It's actually something that we ask ourselves as well as a team. And we actually, we were so inspired by Sarah's stories that, uh, the, that we reached out to her. And uh, when talking to her, to her on the phone, she, uh, she was very intrigued by the, the idea of the on-farm digesters. It was new to her. Um, she asked us to send her the, the full details of the bill and hear some more about it. And um, so the general reaction was positive. Um, but yes, definitely, uh, we, they, the outreach should be conducted, and this is why our bill, um, this is part of our program design, that like, we'll have outreach coordinators that will reach out to these farmers and raise awareness and make the process much more simple. Thank you. And one over here. Hi there. Uh, so I have a question about food labeling under current law, the best if used by and used by dates. Uh, how exactly does this bill and its requirements on private firms differ for current food labeling standards? Uh, do firms have a bit more flexibility to define what best if used by is under current law, or are there uh, more strict regulations that define that in this bill? Thank you. Um, if I understood your question correctly, the idea be behind the date label program is to create uniform labels on a national level, meaning there won't be able to be all these different language that you saw in the pictures, um, but only these two labels will be possible to make the whole, the, their meaning much, much clearer, and that will take form with a national, a national media campaign that part of its goals will be to inform uh, consumers about that change. One more question we have. Okay. No? Uh, thank you very much. Very thank good. You. So those of you who have been throwing out croissants, I uh, hope you stop doing that now. <laughs> <laughs>